County, there's no better place to start your journey towards a four-year degree than Wake Tech. Hi, I'm Nicole Blevins and I'm a student ambassador here at the University Transfer Program. I came to Wake Tech because it was better for my finances and I could be a lot closer to home. In two years, I would like to transfer and get my bachelor's degree in fine arts. Under the statewide articulation agreement, Wake Tech's university transfer degrees transfer seamlessly to institutions within the UNC system. And what sets Wake Tech apart is its many partnerships with private colleges and universities, which also offer seamless transfer opportunities. The university transfer degrees are the Associate in Arts, Associate in Science, Associate in Engineering, and Associate in Fine Arts. The Associates in Arts and the Associates in Science degrees transfer seamlessly to all UNC system universities, and graduates are offered guaranteed admission to at least one of these institutions. How great is that? And another great little tidbit, Wake Tech graduates who go on to a UNC system university do quite well. In fact, they usually have a higher GPA their junior year than students who started at the university. The Associate in Engineering transfers to several UNC schools that offer baccalaureate engineering degrees. The Associate in Fine Arts also transfers to several UNC schools and SCAD, the highly regarded Savannah College of Art and Design. Wake Tech's university transfer classes are offered on a number of campuses across Wake County, including the Southern Wake, Scott Northern Wake, the Western Wake Campus in Cary, and the RCP Campus in Morrisville. So you can pick the location that's convenient for you. Of course, nothing is more convenient than your kitchen table. If you prefer to take your classes online, you'll be happy to know that Wake Tech Online is ranked by several sources as the number one online community college in the country. That's right, in the country. For university transfer, you can take many of your classes online. In fact, if you major in Associate in Arts, you can complete your degree totally online. Wake Tech Online is powered by EPIC, a special certification that prepares faculty for online teaching and students like us for online instruction. Wake Tech's Virtual Support Center connects you with all the virtual tools and resources you need, from financial aid and advising to e-learning support. You can even access Wake Tech libraries and other services remotely. But you really should check out Wake Tech campuses. All campuses have a great library, a tutoring center, career and employment resources, and disability support services. If you like sports, this is the place to be. Wake Tech has two gyms, one on the Southern Wake and one on the Scott Northern Wake campus. I'm on the Wake Tech Eagles soccer team. As a student athlete here, you'll compete against other junior colleges in the area. Beyond sports, there are a lot of other activities where you'll meet people and enrich your college experience. So think about the benefits. Save a ton of money, stay close to home, learn from the best, and then transfer to a university. No matter where your dreams take you, I guarantee you, there's no better place to start your journey than at Wake Tech. Good afternoon, good morning, hello everyone. My name is Deb Hadley and I'm the Director of University Partnerships at Wake Tech and I would like to welcome you to today's virtual open house and this session on university transfer. At Wake Tech, we recognize that we have exceptional students and we have worked very hard to create exceptional opportunities for those students. And I'd like to spend the next 15 minutes or so highlighting our university transfer programs and then actually have people on the call or in the meeting today who are available when this presentation finishes to answer questions that you may have about our transfer programs. So let's just start with a quick overview. The college offers four traditional transfer associate degrees, the associate in arts, associate in science, associate in engineering and the associate in fine arts. We also have two statewide agreements for the career programs, the RN to BSM, which is the associate degree in nursing to the bachelor's degree in nursing, and then our associate in applied science for early childhood education also transfers statewide under an agreement 
every other degree that we offer at the college, applied science degrees and what are called career programs, transfers under some sort of a negotiated transfer agreement with another university. But today, this presentation is going to focus on those four traditional transfer programs. So the, the programs that we're going to talk about today, the Associate in Arts, Associate in Science, the Associate in Engineering, and the Associate in Fine Arts, transfer under two different types of agreements. There are comprehensive articulation agreements and uniform articulation agreements. So let me explain the difference. There are two comprehensive articulation agreements in the state. One is between the UNC system and the North Carolina Community College system. And the other is between North Carolina's participating independent colleges and universities and the community college system. There are 30 of those colleges that participate in the agreement and they're called comprehensive because they apply to all colleges, both at the university level and the community college level. And they allow for the seamless transfer of either the associate in arts or the associate in science to one of those participating institutions. A uniform agreement is a statewide agreement that applies to the colleges that offer the degree. So where the comprehensive agreement applied to all of the colleges because they all offer the degree or accept the degree, uniform agreements just apply to those community colleges and those four-year universities that accept those degrees and transfer. So the colleges that offer the degree and the colleges that accept the degree and transfer. We have, again, four of those uniform agreements in North Carolina, the Associate in Engineering, the Associate in Fine Arts, and we offer visual arts at Wake Tech, the RN to BSN program, and the Associate in Applied Science in Early Childhood Education. So before I take a look at some of these degrees, let me just take a moment and talk about well, why, why Wake Tech and why the associate degree. First, we offer small classes. They're taught by talented, credentialed, experienced, and truly dedicated faculty. In a small environment of 30 students, you're going to study English or psychology or math, and you're going to get the help that you need from that faculty member as well as other support resources that I'll talk about in a few moments. We offer our classes in traditional hybrid, which is part traditional, part online, and fully online formats on multiple campuses. We have an honors program and we have a service learning program. Those are opportunities that you traditionally find at four-year universities. We offer them at Wake Tech. We have research opportunities for our students. We have an incredible amount of student organizations, everything from the Student Government Association to students that do volunteer literacy work to students who are in the economics club as an example. We have academic support centers for English, for math, for foreign language, for social sciences. Just about every one of the courses that you'll take at Wake Tech offers some sort of academic support center or tutoring center uh, to help make sure that you get the support that you need uh, for your work outside of class. And we also have travel and study abroad programs. Our students have gone to Austria, they've gone to China, uh, they've traveled to some amazing places. And so we offer many of the opportunities that you'll find at a four-year university, but we offer it a much reduced cost over those two years to complete that associate degree. And again, you're going to be in a small class environment where you have a lot of hands on opportunity to work with your faculty and with your fellow students. Again, I mentioned before that we have an incredible support system for our students. Our individualized learning center provides one on one tutoring for students in math and science and psychology and business courses. If you're taking a course at Wake Tech, chances are we have a tutor to assist you. And then we have uh, centers where our faculty actually work on a scheduled basis with students, whether it's in humanities or foreign language or English or speech or math or science. Um, it, truly, if you're taking the course at the college, we have someone to help you get through that coursework. 
let's talk about transferring the degree. The associate degree in arts and the associate degree in science, the AS and the AE, both fully transfer and meet lower division requirements at the UNC system institutions, which is a couple of caveats. First is you have to complete the course with a C or better for it to transfer. And second is admission to those four year universities is competitive. But we know statistically, Wake Tech students who transfer on to the UNC system universities are well prepared to succeed in their classes and do as well or better from a GPA perspective in their junior year than do students who started at those universities as freshmen. Um, I will say that if you transfer before you complete the associate degree, you don't get the benefits of that comprehensive articulation agreement. Your transcript is reviewed on a course by course basis to see if the course will transfer. The other thing you need to know is that you, you need to make an early decision about where you're going to transfer and what you're going to major in once you transfer so that you follow the degree plan that's outlined by that, by that four year university for the degree you ultimately plan to pursue. As an example, now let's say you want to get a bachelor's degree in psychology. What you take at NC State might be somewhat different than what you take at ECU from a prep standpoint at Wake Tech. So um, I'm going to talk about some ways that you make sure you get the information that you need early on so that you choose the right classes so that you get the full benefit of the associate degree and you're able to transfer all of the courses that you successfully complete at Wake Tech to that four year university. All right, let's take a bead and uh, focus on arts, humanities and social sciences. We offer two degrees in that division, the associate in arts and the associate in fine arts, visual arts. So the first thing you want to think about if you haven't thought about it already is what do you want to do once you graduate, because that's going to help you determine whether you pursue the associate in arts or the associate in science or engineering or fine arts. So if you want to work in liberal arts, social sciences, business, government, economics, education, or the humanities, the associate in arts is the degree that you want to consider. If you want to work in art, you want to be an artist, you want to be an illustrator, you want to work in studio or gallery management, art education, or perhaps go into graphic or web design at the four year university. The associate in fine arts is a degree that you'll want to consider. The associate in arts transfers, as I mentioned before, to all 16 UNC system institutions. The top transfer choices for Wake Tech students, NC State's number one, ECU number two, UNC Charlotte is the third most popular transfer destination for our students. UNC Wilmington and Greensboro and App State actually trade places on a regular basis for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then we have North Carolina A&T State University, NC Central, and UNC Chapel Hill. And then of course the independent colleges, all the, the 30 that are signatories to the agreement, uh, transfer the Associate in Arts. And the top choices for our students tend to be Meredith, William Peace University, and Campbell University. The Associate in Fine Arts, as I mentioned earlier, is transferred under a uniform agreement, so it only transfers to App State, ECU, Asheville, Chapel Hill, Charlotte, Greensboro, Western Carolina, and several of our North Carolina independent colleges and universities. All right, let's look at math, science, and engineering. This is a rendering of uh, RTP2, which will be the second building on our RTP campus, which is over in Morrisville. It's going to be an amazing facility. The first building is up and has been open for about a year and a half. If you are considering a career in any of the engineering fields, whether it be mechanical, electrical, biomedical, textile, if you're interested in software development, computer science or information technology, bio, life sciences, chemistry, physics, the Associate in Science or the Associate in Engineering is the degree that you want to consider at Wake Tech. The transfer destinations for the Associate in Science are the same as the transfer destinations for the Associate in Arts. This degree transfers to all 16 
of the UNC system institutions. And again, the top transfer universities are State, ECU, Charlotte, Wilmington, App State, Greensboro, etc. The associate in engineering only transfers to these five institutions under the uniform agreement. So the AE transfers to NC State, to UNC Charlotte, to ECU, to uh, North Carolina A&T State University, and to Western Carolina. It will transfer to other colleges and universities, but it doesn't transfer under the uniform articulation agreement that I mentioned earlier. All right, we're going to open it up to questions in just a couple of minutes, but I want to give you some advice. The first piece of advice in terms of maximizing your opportunities at Wake Tech is to take ACA 122, which is a one credit course. It's offered fully online. It's called College Transfer Success in your very first semester. I know you're thinking a College Transfer Success course. I know how to be successful. You do. I'm sure you do. But in that course, you will make decisions about where you want to transfer and what you want to major in once you transfer. And that's critically important to making sure that you choose the right courses while you're at Wake Tech so that you maximize the number of credits that transfer to that your university and you're able to take full advantage of the cost savings that come from attending a two year college before you transfer to the university. The second piece of advice throughout your academic career with us, work closely with an academic advisor. If you hit a bump in the road, a speed bump, if you have a hiccup in your life, that academic advisor is the person that will be able to you navigate whatever that is and make sure that you stay on track to complete the degree and successfully transfer on your timetable. The third piece of advice, I know that basket weaving course sounds really easy and interesting, but if it's not in your bachelor's degree pathway, you don't want to take it. You want to follow the transfer pathway that's outlined for your goals. And I'm going to show you where you can find those on our website to again make sure that the classes you take at Wake Tech transfer to the university and the degree you want to pursue once you finish up your associate degree at Wake Tech. And finally, to the extent that you can, we want you to take full advantage of the academic support and the extracurricular programs that are offered at Wake Tech because they're really wonderful opportunities for you to engage with faculty and with fellow students, to build your resume, to obtain experiences and skills outside of the classroom that are going to benefit you uh, as you pursue your bachelor's degree as well as as you go through life. All right, um, you're going to have questions and we have contacts for you to get help with those questions. These are the contact um, uh, email addresses for our Dean of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, the Associate Dean of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Mike, Dr. Mike Beck and Associate Dean Lee Corbett, Dean Sharon Welker, who is our Dean for Math, Science and Engineering and our Department Head for Engineering. Dr. Chris is awesome and uh, they're all for happy to help you um, make sure you choose the right degree and get uh, answers to questions that you may have. I'm going to open it up to questions here in just a minute. Um, for additional information, I want to encourage you to visit our transfer resources website to look at our programs page. That's the second link. And then the third link is the link to our advising team. Um, and then our program links are located here. So I want to get out of this presentation for just a second and take you to our transfer resources page so that you can see on this page, you can transfer search by university, you can transfer search by degree. You can actually complete your application through this link. You'll see schedules for when our university partners are visiting our campuses. This link will take you to the UNC system website and this link will take you to the North Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities website. If you're curious about transfer courses and requirements on this particular page, if you scroll down a little ways, You'll see the required credits for the Associate in Arts, Science and the AFA, as well as the required credits for the Associate in Engineering. And this is the link to those UNC transfer guides that I talked about that help you make decisions about the courses that you want to take at Wake Tech. So that's the end of my presentation. We're going to open it up to questions. 
I can't thank you enough for joining us today, and I look forward to hopefully meeting you at some point. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Wait Tech's virtual open house. Make sure to smash that apply button right now because we can't wait to see you as a student. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at admissions at waitech.edu. Thank you. Hello. We have a number of questions that came in and we will now turn it over to our Q&A live portion. Great, thanks Dean Welker. We have a couple of questions in the Q&A box. You're welcome to add yours and we'll hit them in the order in which they come in. The first actually is for you, Dean Welker, and the question is, if one gets an Associate of Engineering degree at Wake Tech and then does not get accepted to the College of Engineering at NC State, would that person be eligible for admission into the Colleges of Science, excuse me, the College of Sciences at NC State, or would they need some additional coursework at Wake Tech? Well, good morning, and that is an interesting question and a complicated one. The Associate in Engineering transfers fully as a completed degree to the engineering colleges and universities. So if your path changes and you're not going to be in engineering at an engineering university, there could be a few courses that you might need to take once you transfer. Um, the different colleges at the universities could have preferences for general education courses. So all of your courses work, they just may count as elective credits and then you would take a few others, but you still have a transfer pathway. And many of our students double major, they might major in the Associates in Engineering and also the Associate in Science. There's just one or two courses that are different. Um, and if you get both of those, then you are covered for any of your um, opportunities. Thank you, Sharon. All right, we have another question and I'll actually answer this one. The question is, I am currently enrolled at UNCW. How and when would I go about transferring my transcripts? So as uh, we have a lot of students that transfer uh, from four years back to a two year, from two year to four years, four year to four year, two year to two year, um, that happens quite frequently. I myself, I think I attended four colleges before I finally landed where I needed to be and completed my degree. When you apply to Wake Tech, um, as part of the process, you'll answer questions about where you've attended before and you'll be given an opportunity to submit your transcripts from other schools that you have attended. And then what happens is, is that lands in our registration and records office. There's actually a statewide evaluation tool for um, seeing courses that transfer from one of our four-year institutions back to the two-year or vice versa. So as part of the admissions and enrollment process at the college, your transcript will be evaluated and you'll be told how those credits transfer. Um, I hope that answers the question and if it doesn't, you're welcome to piggyback onto it in the Q&A box. Another question that's in the box is, can I transfer after just one semester at Wake Tech? And Dean Welker, I'm going to let you take this question. Hi. Um, yes, many students choose to use Wake Tech as a through college. You get some of your credits with us and then apply for and move on to your universities. When that happens, if you do not get the full degree with us, then your transcript courses are evaluated on a course by course basis so that the university will determine if the credit counts for elective or general education or a major requirement. And the universities have transfer counselors to help you think through your options. The best protection for students is to complete their full degree at Wake Tech, to complete your science sequence, to complete your math sequences, to get your English back to back with us. And when you get the degree, you have the protections that are guaranteed in the Comprehensive Articulation Agreement. 
Thank you very much. That's a great question. And I just want to piggyback and say that um, by completing your associate degree with us, you are fully prepared for the rigor of the work um, in upper uh, level coursework in your specific discipline when you transfer to the university. So um, our students are very well prepared and do well when they transfer. And our transfer partners love our students, um, so they're well received. It's just a just a great opportunity to make that transition. I don't see any um, additional questions in the chat box, but we do have some questions that we get asked on a pretty regular basis. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read one of those and ask Dean Walker again to talk about um, completion of the associate in science. Um, and you might as well talk about the associate in um, arts and engineering and um, fine arts uh, all online. Uh, students want to know, can they complete these degrees um, just by taking online courses? OK, um, great question. And we have all learned a lot in these last few months about having quality online education experiences. So um, the Associate in Arts is easily fully online. I will say that for the Associate in Science and our Associate in Engineering, some of the upper level courses and the lab requirements are too technical um, in a normal situation to have fully online labs. That if you're getting the Associate in Science um, and the associates in engineering, part of what you need is that hands-on experience to gain the lab skills and knowledge that your universities expect you to have as a junior. Now, certainly in the COVID world, we have adapted, we have um, done a robust experience for students, but um, even so our organic chemistry and some of our engineering courses maintain the hybrid approach where you have a lot of your instruction online, but you do come to campus um, in a safe environment in very small groups right now um, to gain some of those skills. But our faculty are incredibly gifted at working with you. And so you can certainly get most of your courses online and they are offered at a variety of times in campuses for the ones that have the hybrid and on campus. So we think we can meet all of the needs of our citizens as you graduate. Thank you. Harriet might want to address Associate in Fine Arts. I'm not positive about that. So we have someone um, from that area. Yes, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. So I am the Associate Department Head for the Foreign Languages and Fine Arts Department, and we offer the AFA, the Associate in Fine Arts in Visual Art, and that enables you to pursue a career in the creative arts um, and a achieve a Bachelor's of Fine Arts at a four-year university. So um, we have adapted to our new normal, and we are offering um, our, our art history lectures online as well as our core studio classes. So in the AFA degree, these are lab courses where you typically would work six hours in the studio with your colleagues. Um, we are meeting, currently we are meeting synchronously online once weekly, and we have a robust uh, program where all of our uh, instructors are collaborating to create um, quality online studio courses. Some of our elective studio courses, such as sculpture, um, and um, drawing to and printmaking more technical and material based um, um, studios are currently put on hold until we can meet back in person. But we do have plenty of studio offerings such as painting um, and drawing and um, and uh, graphic arts as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, we look forward to seeing you soon. That's great. Thank you, Harriet. OK, we have two more questions in the chat box, and I'm just going to go ahead and take both of those. The first is, do AP cl uh, class credits transfer to Wake Tech? And the answer is yes, they do, um, provided that the score is sufficient to transfer in as college level coursework, and that will be evaluated as part of the transcript evaluation process when you apply and are admitted to Wake Tech. And the second question is, when will I be connected with an advisor after I'm already admitted to Wake Tech? Um, we admit 100% of the 100% uh, of top applicants who apply to Wake Tech. Uh, we are an open admissions college, 
So everyone is admitted to the college. Once you indicate that you're going to enroll with the college, um, as part of that process, you'll receive communications from our admissions and our uh, academic advising center um, with instructions on how to connect with an advisor. So once you make the decision, um, or probably even before you make the decision, um, we can connect you with a first year academic advisor who will help you get started on the courses that you need for the credential that you're aiming to complete with Wake Tech. Um, at 11.45, um, the schedule has a session called Guiding Prospective Students, and that's being conducted with an admissions representative from the college. There's also a session on financial aid and a session on uh, career and employment resources, which is a great opportunity for those of you who are undecided about what you want to pursue when you get to college to take a look at the tools um, and opportunities that we offer for students to make those decisions. And then at 1130, there's a live Q&A with an admissions uh, representative. So you may want to jump into those sessions to get answers to some of the more technical questions about the admissions process and the advising process. I will say that every student in their first semester is advised by the Academic Advising Center. And then in subsequent semesters, students are either uh, co-advised through advising and a faculty advisor or advise through a faculty advisor, depending on the program of study that they choose. We have kind of a split advising model at the college. And so uh, what degree you plan to pursue will indicate whether you stick with the uh, Academic Advising Center throughout your college career with us, whether you're dual advised or whether you're advised uh, strictly by a, a faculty member in your program of study. I hope that answers that question. Okay. And perhaps Flavio, um, one of our engineering professors, could speak to the Associates in Engineering Advising System. Hi, hi everyone. I'm glad to be here to help you decide if you want to join Wake Tech and I'm very pleased to tell you that uh, we have a very good program in the Associate of Engineering. It gives you a lot of opportunities. I believe it might make you more prepared to join a full four-year institution. And a lot of our students go to NC State. That's the major choice, the preferred choice of them. And they are successful over there. OK, so. Uh, we are very pleased that we are highly hanked with NC State University, that we are the ones who transfer most students to the university, and we've been developing this program for a long time, and I believe you'll like a lot if you join with us. There are a lot of opportunities there, and like Sharon said before, we have a small class, we have very experienced professors over there that can really help you get to your goals, help to get to your dreams. So I hope you join us and please ask any questions or reach out to the department head, Dr. Chris, or to, to any other questions you might want to ask. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Flavio. That's terrific. Um, we don't have any new questions in the chat box, but one that we get all the time is, what is the difference between an online course and a hybrid course? And so I'm, I'm going to open this up because it's, it's going to be different depending on the discipline that you're studying, but I'm going to ask uh, Dean Welker to answer this first, um, and then I'm going to ask Harriet and Flavio to kind of chime in when uh, Dean Welker is finished and talk about uh, the difference between a fully online course and a hybrid course in their programs. So uh, Sharon, could we start with you? Hey, so fully online does mean that you um, don't come to campus for any set meetings. Um, in the non-COVID world, we do have students come to campus for proctored testing situations, but there would be a um, window, say from Wednesday night to Saturday morning, and students would schedule their time to come to campus and take the proctored test. Um, but other than that, there would be no set requirements. 
Now, we are developing and have a wide variety of online opportunities now. Some of them are called synchronous online classes. And so even though you are taking the course from the comfort of your home, you might have a set meeting time. And in the course schedule, when you sign up, you will know that. It will say this section will have the synchronous online delivery at 10 o'clock on Monday mornings. And that's an attendance requirement. You would be expected to log on and be ready to attend at that synchronous time. Many of our courses are well designed to be offered through the asynchronous online mode. Our faculty are engaged in the classes. They set the calendar and the assignments. They check in um, with discussion boards and there are video exchanges and many opportunities for touch points. But asynchronous, you set your own times and um, time management is a huge concern for online classes. So always double what you think you will need to spend on it, especially in your math and science classes. It does take time. And then hybrid, you have um, your lecture and knowledge base um, material being delivered online, um, usually asynchronously, and then you have required times on campus. So when we say hybrid, you can expect to go to a campus weekly or every other week, depending on how it's set up in the schedule. So that's how it works for our associate in science, so the science and math courses. Thank you, Harry. Would you like to add? Sure, yes. So for the um, AFA degree, um, like Dean Welker said, um, most of our classes are uh, asynchronous online, meaning that you can um, complete the coursework at your own pace. Um, and we also offer a few synchronous online sessions where, again, you would be meeting with your instructor uh, via Teams. We use Microsoft Teams once weekly or sometimes twice weekly, depending on the course. And, um, and that is a requirement for attendance. Again, for our studio classes, those are synchronous online. A lot of the work is uh, done in a home studio, and then um, we do critiques online and have um, opportunities to collaborate during our synchronous um, or shared meetings. For foreign language classes, um, we are also offering synchronous and hybrid sessions. So uh, you would have the opportunity to meet and speak and practice with your colleagues as well as your instructor online through synchronous and hybrid classes. Um, we are also offering um, a few hybrid classes on campus where you can come and, and be with um, the instructor um, on both North and South campus. I have a quick thing I want to add to um, what Harriet said. Um, asynchronous does not mean self-paced. So our faculty guide the assignments. Um, you will have a calendar that clearly explains your due dates. Um, and usually there are two at least attendance posts or required assignments each week at a certain time. So you might have from Monday to Wednesday to work on it, but Wednesday is still the due date. And so managing your calendar and your instructor's expectations is a, a very important skill for success. Yes, thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely. And the same applies for us. The instructor definitely uh, schedules the course and the pacing and, um, and there are specific due dates uh, per week. Thank you very much. Flavio, did you um, have anything you wanted to add to that? If not, there's another uh, question in the Q&A box that I'll that I'll go ahead and toss out. I can only say that we also offer the three modes, synchronous, asynchronous and hybrid, but we try to choose the mode that is the most appropriate for the course we have in. We have engineering, have different course requirements, some slabs, some more practical, so we try to focus on what is the course, then what's the best mode to to offer it. And like Dr. Sharon mentioned, we have a highly structured material in Blackboard that have been working. So these students are focused and they have a good chance to succeed even in the hardest subjects that we have. OK, thank you. Great, thank you very much. OK, I'm going to um, I'm going to read this next question and um, probably will require may require 
uh, Sharon and Flavio to answer those because it's about engineering. The question is this, to transfer to NC State for the engineering program, there are classes such as physics-based calc or English 101 that I couldn't find when course planning. Is English 111 equivalent to that and are there other courses that will transfer equivalently? So Sharon, I'm gonna let you start the answer to that and then Flavio, please jump in if, um, if we need to add to that. Mm -hmm. All right, and we have just <coughs> two minutes and that's a very um, good question. So on our website, if you go to the Associates in Engineering, you'll see that program of study <coughs> and it will list the specific courses. Then at the university, such as NC State, you can search for transfer equivalencies and they will tell you the numbering system, like the number at NC State might be English 101 and it will show you that the number at Wake Tech is English 111. So the short answer, English 111 is the transfer course. Um, so you'll take English 111, 112. And you are right, um, you do need to pay attention to calculus-based physics, which would be physics 251, as opposed to algebra-based, which would be physics 151. So you are absolutely right to pay very close attention to the numbering system and to look for that crosswalk of the numbers. Um, and Flavio can answer specifically about where you might find the um, advising materials for the engineering degree. Thank you, Sharon. And uh, I would like to point on the same site, engineering.wakedtech.edu. Mm -hmm. There is uh, what we call an advising okay. form over there that mm -hmm. it has a summary of all this information, how they translate and has all the course it can take. So it, it's very well focused. Yes, and thank you so much. Step. And I am sorry to cut you off, but engineering.wakedtech.edu or transfer.waitech.edu will get you to a wealth of resources. And so one question that is common among students is what is the difference between an online course and a hybrid course? Thanks for the question, Kim. Uh, an online course is a course that's taught fully online. So everything that you do in the course from interacting with your classmates to reviewing materials to spending time with the faculty member who is teaching the course is done online. In a hybrid course, we kind of split it up and you spend about half of your time in the classroom environment and about half of your time online, depending on the question, or excuse me, depending on the class, um, will depend, will determine what you do while you're actually in the classroom. Most faculty members who teach hybrid classes use that classroom time as an opportunity to work with students either in, in group projects, in laboratory uh, assignments, or in some sort of one-on-one -on -one capacity. Great question. All right, and Ms. Hadley, we have another question coming in, um, and that is, will you be sharing the presentation uh, with the participants? That's a great question, and I honestly don't know the answer to that, but I do believe that they're going to post this uh, session is being recorded and they're going to post those recordings on our website. If you have a question uh, that follows the presentation, you're welcome to talk with anyone on our admissions team. Um, my name is Deb Hadley and my email address is D as in Deb, L as in Lynn, H-A-D-L-E-Y at waketech.edu. And if you want to send your question or specific information that you'd like to have from this presentation to me, I'll be happy to respond to it. All right, as we wait for more questions coming in, um, I'm going to pose another common question to our Associate Dean of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, Mr. Corbett. And um, that question is, can a student transfer after just one semester at Wake Tech? Yes, students can transfer after one semester at the college. Um, However, I should point out a couple of things. One is that it is to the student's benefit to get the degree because there's a, a couple of key advantages to getting the entire degree. 
If you do not get the degree, then the courses transfer on a course by course basis to the university. Whereas with the degree, the entire degree transfers as a block. Uh, and uh, when, so if you do not have the degree and the courses transfer on a course by course basis, the university makes individual decisions based upon that. Um, and Ms. Hadley, did you want to follow up on that? Uh, any additional information on that? No, that's a perfect answer, Lee. Thank you. All right, our question and answer box seems to be a little bit quiet. All right, we have a new question coming in. Um, let me pose this question to uh, Deb Hadley again, the Director of University Partnerships. And the question is, what portion of your students transfer to a North Carolina university in year three? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I, I don't, uh, we transfer, I can tell you that there are a little over 10,000 students who transfer each fall to one of the UNC system institutions. And uh, of that 10,000 students, at least for last fall, fall of 2019, Wake Tech uh, was about 1,450 of those students. So we, about a little over 10% of the students who transfer into the UNC system from community colleges come from Wake Tech each year. The university system actually has information on its website where you can look to see how many students transferred from Wake Tech or from Durham Tech or um, Central Carolina Community College and where they transferred to. And you can search that data uh, by fall and by spring going back almost a decade. But on average, a little over 10% of the students who transfer into the UNC system uh, transfer from Wake Tech. And again, the number one place that our students transfer is NC State, number two is ECU, and number three is UNC Charlotte. Gosh, these are great questions coming in. Um, again, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will do our best to answer them. Um, another common question that I'm going to direct to uh, Dr. Michael Beck, who's the Dean of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, is about the ACA 122 course. Um, are students required to take the ACA 122 course in their first semester at Wake Tech? That's a great question. So, uh, here at Wake Tech, we feel that ACA 122 is valuable for student success here at the college. So we work with students to ensure that they get into that particular class early on in their semester to give them access to strategies, tips, and support uh, uh, services and networks that they can utilize throughout their entire period here at the college. So we work with students again to get in, in ACA 122. It is a requirement of the degree, the Associate in Arts degree here at the college. So so yes, um, it, what we've noticed are our conversations with students, our, our institutional data, have they've all shown and told us that students who partake in ACA 122, especially early on in their semester, first semester, is, is the best route to go, um, really perform or outperform students who uh, may have transferred in without ACA 122 or compared to other students um, throughout the community college system. So ACA 122 is, is definitely um, a requirement for the degree. And again, we work with students to ensure that um, they get that class early and it definitely benefits them uh, throughout the duration of their time here at the college. Great question. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we have a new question in our question and answer box. Um, and Deb, I'm gonna direct this question to you. Okay. The student has typed, I am still unsure of what program I want to transfer into at a four-year school. How will my classes be determined? 
I would encourage you to um, to consider, um, as Dean Beck just discussed, taking ACA 122 early in your program at Wake Tech, in addition to the great study skills and academic success work that they do in that course, students actually take the time to explore uh, the transfer options available to them um, based on the, the careers that they're interested in. Um, and then once you've once you've narrowed it down to a couple of different schools and one or two different degree options, then you can take a look. Each, each of the 16 universities has published what are called transfer degree plans. And those plans outline your first four semesters and then your last four semesters. So they delineate if you want to go to NC State for example, and get a degree in chemical engineering, exactly what you want to take at the community college level to transfer successfully. Um, the, the other thing that you can do once you, be, even before you enroll at Wake Tech, is work with someone in our Career and Employment Resources Division. Um, they have folks that work in that group uh, who will help you take some assessments and talk with you about what you think your career interests are at this particular juncture and help you make a decision uh, about what colleges offer the degree that you're interested in and what the best pathway is for you. Uh, I posted in the uh, question and answer box the link to the UNC system transfer student site. And if you scroll down that page, you'll see all of the links to the 16 UNC institutions in their transfer degree plan pages. So you can get a sense of the type of coursework that's required for the degree you're interested in pursuing. So there are a number of options just to kind of recap because I know I talked quite a bit there. Um, take that ACA 122 course. It really will benefit you and it is a degree requirement and it does transfer under the comprehensive and the uniform transfer agreements. Um, talk with someone in career and employment resources at Wake Tech who can help you work through. We have a tool called Career Lens to make some decisions and help you perhaps narrow your focus in terms of what you want to take. And use that UNC system website to take a look at the programs of study offered by the colleges you think you're interested in so you get a sense of the coursework that's required and whether or not that actually seems interested uh, interesting to you the other piece of advice that i would give you is talk to people that you know people in your life who um, work for different companies who work in different industries who do things perhaps that you think you would be interested in doing when you graduate to get a sense of where they went to school and what they studied and how that worked out for them um, that's something that um, my family helped me do a really, really long time ago, and it informed the choices that I made in terms of where I went to school and what I studied, and it, it turned out to be very helpful to me. I hope that answers the question. Wonderful answer, and I'm, Miss um, Hadley, I'm going to keep you on the spot because we have another question about ACA 122, and that is, can you take ACA 122 before the first year? Once you've enrolled in the college, you should be able to register for classes. Um, I'd have to, if, if somebody else on the call happens to know whether it is part of the Career and College Promise pathway, that would help tell me if it's eligible under that program. Um, but once you enroll as a student, um, you, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to enroll in ACA 122. I know internally we've talked about offering a bridge program in the summer. We're obviously beyond that point now, but um, you can take it as a visiting student even before you started if there's room available in the course. And, and that's my understanding as well. That, that you can take it your, uh, even before you come to Wake Tech, for example, you mentioned career in uh, college promise. If someone is in high school, and would like as long as you have been admitted to the college, then uh, you should be able to enroll for that class. Um, that is my understanding. Watch. We have a new question coming in about engineering, and so I'm going to direct this to our department head for <coughs> engineering. And this question is. What percentage of Wake Tech students who attempt to transfer to NC State's College of Engineering 
are offered admission? Very good question and one that we probably get very often. Uh, so the way I'm going to answer this question is it depends on the major that a student wants to pursue at NC State since the different programs at NC State for Engineering requires different GPAs. So mechanical engineering is our top and of course also the top for NC State that requires about a 3.8. Our students are able to get in when they have the GPA. Unfortunately, I don't have the numbers now, but the students, I can guarantee you the students that want to go to NC State and have the right GPA are able to get into it. So I will also add that the minimum GPA, by the way, for any program right now at NC State from Wake Tech is at 3.5 uh, and our students have mostly got gotten into NC State if they want to uh, go to NC State. If the students want to email me uh, directly to get specific numbers, I'll be more than happy to do that. Thanks, Kim. Wonderful. Um, we have another question that has come in and that is, um, are there any requirements for admission to Wake Tech other than successfully completing high school? And Ms. Hadley, I'll direct this one to you. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, Wake Tech is an open enrollment institution. We uh, accept 100% of the top applicants who apply. So that's 100% of the students who apply to Wake Tech. Um, you do um, need to have a completed um, high school or uh, an equivalency uh, to be admitted to the college. Um, the uh, determination of um, what English and math courses you are able to take is made based on a number of factors. Depend, uh, it, it can be based on uh, test scores. If you took something like the SAT or the ACT, it can be based on your high school GPA, um, depending on how long ago you graduated from high school. Um, and it could also be based on uh, a placement test that we give if none of those other um, measures are available to you. But there, uh, we. We um we welcome all students uh, to the college when they apply. OK, we've been getting some great questions. If there are any other additional questions, please feel free to post them in the question and answer box. Kimberly, I would just add to that last answer that I gave that there's, I believe, an admissions session that immediately follows this session, and that would be a great session for someone to ask specific questions about the admission process and, and placement in English and math courses and what you need to do to get started at Wake Tech. Wonderful. Um, we have a new question and that is, um, I'm going to direct this question to you, Ms. Hadley. Uh, the student has typed, I graduated in 1993, so um, what type of information is needed uh, for my application? Would it just be a high school transcript? Um. Placement in um, from a from a strictly a placement perspective, I believe if you graduated within the last ten years, they'll um, they'll make those recommendations based on your high school GPA. But I really would encourage you. I'm not an admissions um, person, and I would encourage you to uh, either sit through the admissions session that follows this one, or talk to an admissions representative. Um, they'll be happy to answer your specific questions about admission to the college. Great questions coming in. Um, another common question that is asked is the difference between associates of engineering program 
and the Associates of Applied Engineering program. So I'm wondering if our wonderful Department Head for Engineering can take this question. All right, thanks Kim. And uh, so actually uh, the last time we did this virtual open house, uh, all the parents that came in with their students who were ready to come to Wake Tech, I, we found out during uh, halfway through my presentation that they were there for the applied engineering. So I thought it was very, very interesting that as halfway through my presentation, I kind of saw the blank faces and question marks and was wondering what was happening. So I actually contacted the Dean of Applied Engineering who actually happened to be uh, close by and directed a parents over there. So that is a very good question. The Applied of Engineering uh, program is for example, in the simplest way is for those who want the technical skills and not necessarily, and again, it's two ways, even in Applied Engineering, if students want to study the plumbing, the mechanical, and just want to get a diploma or a certificate to finish a two year program to go out there and work, that is the applied engineering. Not to say they cannot transfer as well. They do also have a transfer program, uh, but that will be, I will direct that to the applied engineering dean to answer the very specific ways in which you could transfer. However, for the applied engineering, this is a two year associative degree and a complete transfer to a four year institution. So we do not have your, your typical plumbing, automotive, welding, <clears throat> or carpentry in the applied, uh, sorry, in the Associates of Engineering. Additionally, if students who are interested in applied engineering do get an Associate of Applied Science uh, degree, it, there's no Associates of Applied Engineering degree. I think that's also one of the very areas that students get very confused. Once you go to the Applied Engineering Technology, the degree you'll be getting there is the Applied of Associates of sci uh, sciences. If you do the Associates of Engineering, then you're getting an AE degree. So I hope uh, that helped. And I am not seeing any more questions coming in at this time. Hey Kim, uh, maybe I can just uh, add one point here, just a general comment about uh, the, uh, the great job that the academic advising area does. Uh, they, uh, they are able to talk with students uh, who are unsure about their degree path at the university or who are absolutely sure about their degree path at the university. And our academic advisors can guide students uh, to the correct way tech degree as they, can, as, the, as they plan to transfer to the university a couple of years down the road or whenever they do plan to transfer to the university. And um, two of our transfer degrees, the Associate in Engineering degree, as well as the Associate in Fine Arts Visual Arts degree, also have some advisors within the degree programs that assist the academic advising area. So just a summary, it's just the academic advisors are a great resource for you to go to with just general questions about advising and, and what courses to take. Uh, can I transfer after just one semester at Wake Tech? Um, so Deb Hadley, I, I think we'll throw that question to you. Um, so what, what do you have to say about transferring before you've completed the associate degree? Thanks, Scott. I appreciate the question. You can transfer anytime you're ready to transfer and our university partners will encourage you to transfer as soon as you are able to transfer. But we would tell you to stick around and finish your associate's degree with us because when you do so and you follow the 
uh, transfer degree pathway that's outlined for the university, all of the classes that you take at Wake Tech are going to transfer into that degree. And you'll find that when you get to the university, you are academically prepared for the rigor of those upper level courses. You will have had great opportunities at Wake Tech. And so we would encourage you to stay with us until you complete that degree. But yes, you can transfer as soon as you are ready to do so. And then when you finish that degree, you can also go through the reverse transfer process and we will award you that associate degree uh, once you have completed the, the courses uh, at the university that transfer back to us. Very good, thank you, Beth. Um, so we have a question that's come in from Leah. Uh, looks to be focused on the uh, associate in fine arts. Um, so how are requirements different if you want to transfer to a university or private arts college like SCAD outside of North Carolina? Um, so Melania, uh, can you help us with that one? Certainly, thank you for the question, Leah. I think it all depends on what uh, feel within the visual arts you're planning on transferring to. As Dev said in her presentation, different uh, universities have different uh, options for a BFA in ceramics, a BFA in photography and design. So I think it all depends on what path you are following um, in order to make the selection at Wade Tech that in the general education courses will transfer to that other institution. But overall, the Associate of Fine Arts is set up that the general education courses that you will need for a BFA will be the same. The same requirements for English, math and so forth is when you go into this specialization on the field itself is that you have to look at the specific field of study that you're interested in and then make that selection of the course that you, of the university you're going to transfer to based on that. And as I stated, uh, taking ACA 122, it's a good starting point for you to help you guide the search and the selection of what institution may be better for you to transfer to. All right. Thank you very much, Melania. Of course. All right. The next question um, is, can I get an associate in science degree with all online courses? Uh, so you may have seen in the video, the associate in arts degree. Um, is certainly listed as a fully online program because many of those arts uh, associate in arts classes are available fully online. It is possible uh, also to get a uh, an associate of science degree fully online as well. Uh, there is some limitations in terms of um, the types of courses, the elective courses that you might be able to take. For example, a lot of our chemistry courses uh, and physics courses um, are not necessarily offered online every semester. Uh, they are offered often in a hybrid format with part of the class being online and the uh, labs being in person. Um, but it is possible to get to the, uh, the associates in science degree fully online as well. Um, so next question up, uh, are there different guidelines for students that are in an OCS program in high school? And I am going to throw that possibly to Deb. Thank you, Scott. I, I think the, um, the corollary at Wake Tech would be what we call a career program, a career and technical program. So that's typically an associate in applied science, and it's designed for the student to complete the two year degree, graduate and then go into the workforce. And what we have done at Wake Tech is um, we have either negotiated or agreed to participate in transfer agreements that allow for the transfer of those career programs. So that would be a degree in criminal justice, for example, or a degree in business administration or accounting or computer programming, information technology support. So we've negotiated agreements so that all of those career programs transfer somewhere. It depends on what the student's goals are. If, if you want to transfer when you complete your two year degree to a four year university and complete the baccalaureate 
in the discipline that aligns with your career goals, then you should pursue one of those university transfer degrees. But if you're a student who wants to complete a career program in two years, go to work and then perhaps go back to school well, while you're working part time and earn that bachelor's degree, then you want to look at one of our career and technical programs of study. I hope that answers your question, and if it doesn't, um, please let us know in the chat box or you're welcome to uh, email uh, our admissions office and we'll be happy to get you those answers. Excellent. Wonderful, thank you, Deb. Um, so next question I think goes to Melania once more. So if I want to go into music, what arts program would you recommend to transfer from? Uh, great question and uh, certainly my understanding is that an associate in arts degree will give you the uh, versatility for you to transfer successfully to our four year school that offers a degree in music. With music, um, it is uh, interesting to search out the four year university and see what uh, music courses may be required um, that unfortunately we don't offer them away. Tech. So, for instance, if you are going into uh, piano or music education, uh, versus uh, uh, if you are trying to major into an, in an instrument, it will be different. So overall, the Associate in Arts degree will give you the general education courses that will transfer seamlessly. Uh, nevertheless, when you go to the four year school, depending on the music uh, path that you want to follow, you probably will be uh, needing to take uh, Music Theory 1 or Piano 1, those courses that we don't offer at the way tech. I uh, hope that answers your question. So in brief, uh, the associate in arts degree path uh, to follow if you're going into music. Wonderful, thank you, Melania. Of course. Um, so another question that we've gotten is, Deb, you had talked a little bit in your previous answer about uh, associate in science versus uh, associate in um, applied science and those sorts of uh, career programs. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the difference between associate in science and associate in applied science? Sure, I'll be happy to, Scott. Thank the you. associate in science is a transfer degree. So while you're at Wake Tech, the courses that you're going to take will be um, two blocks of courses, essentially. They'll be general education courses and they will be um, what are called pre-major elective courses. So depending again on where you wanna go and what you wanna study, the courses that you take at Wake Tech would be considered lower division, general education, and pre-major discipline specific courses. Then those transfer to the university, and while you're at the university, you take all of the upper level courses. So for example, if you wanna uh, earn a four-year degree in, um, agricultural science, for example, then what you would do at Wake Tech is you're going to take your lower division courses. It's going to consist of a lot of math and science that will all transfer in and will prepare you to take the upper upper level division, upper level, upper yeah, exactly courses at the university versus an associate in applied science where you'll take somewhere between 12 and 15 hours of general education courses. And then you'll take discipline specific courses for the rest of your program of study. Most of the AAS programs are somewhere between 64 and 68 credit hours in total. And again, about 12 to 15 of those will be gen ed. So it'll be a couple of different English classes, a math class, a social sciences class, but then everything else will be discipline specific. So if you were majoring in computer science, for example, say programming at Wake Tech, you would take Java and you would take C++ and you would take systems architecture and technical courses like that versus if you wanted to pursue the bachelor's degree in computer science, say at NC State at Wake Tech, you're not going to take those programming courses as much as you're going to take the lower division math and science courses that you'll need for the upper division. I think that squares away the difference. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, so in Another question in from Leah. Um, so Leah is asking if we start out, uh, if a student starts out in a transfer program, uh, but then decides that they do not want to pursue the four year degree, 
but they go through and they graduate, they still end up with the two year associate's degree and then they can pursue their uh, career options. So we just want um, some uh, verification that that is correct. <laughs> that is, as long as you complete the requirements for the degree, then you are awarded the degree, regardless of whether you transfer or you don't transfer once you've completed those requirements. Thank you. Um, so another good question. Um, I'm signed up for the associate in arts degree uh, and would like to know why some university transfer courses are scheduled more frequently than other transfer courses. Um, so I guess uh, Lee, would you like to take that one? Sure, I'll be glad to. So one of the reasons for that is that there are different categories for the courses uh, that we teach at Wake Tech and one category is called the acronym as a UGETSI course, and, and there are a number of UGETSI courses which are required for the AA and the AS degree. So therefore, because they are required for those two transfer degrees, we need to offer a very large number of sections of them. Uh, but we also have a large number of elective classes which are not required for specifically required for the degree, but electives are classes from which you can choose to meet an overall electives requirement. So to summarize that answer, uh, the courses that we offer in large numbers are high demand courses, which are usually and often required for the degree. And if they're not often offered that often, then it's generally not a required course. I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much, Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are coming up on our time pretty soon. So if you have any other questions, please make sure they get into the box. Um, until then, another question that has come in uh, is how a student might contact their advisor. Uh, so once they are here, how can they get help with advising? So Deb, is that one that maybe you would like to handle again, please? Sure, I'll be happy to answer that question, Scott. In the first semester at Wake Tech, every student is advised by someone in our uh, academic advising center. And then um, for students who are in college transfer programs in the Associate in Arts, the Associate in Science, those students continue to be advised by the Academic Advising Center throughout their college career at Wake Tech. Students who are in the Associate in Fine Arts and the Associate in Engineering are advised by both faculty and the Advising Center. So they have a couple of different options in terms of where to go to get their advising. Students who are in Associate in Applied Science programs, they are advised after the first semester by a faculty member. Every student will have access to their own account that will show them the degree that they are pursuing, the courses that they've completed, the courses that they're enrolled in, the courses that they have yet to take, as well as contact information for the the advisor that's assigned to them or the contact in the advising center. So an advisor is always available to work with students and we encourage students to take advantage of those resources. Excellent. Thank you very much. And so I believe our last question uh, that has come in now, uh, if I graduate with an associate in arts degree, am I guaranteed to get into a UNC university? So Deb, I think that last one throws to you as well one last time. So thank you, Scott. So part of the uh, Uniform Articulation Agreement and the uh, Comprehensive Articulation Agreement is um, a, um, it's not called guarantee. I, I, I apologize, the word that they use is completely escaping me. So if someone else remembers that at this moment, jump in and save me here. Um, but essentially, yes, as long as you um, complete the requirements for the degree that your GPA is 2.0 or higher, um, admission is competitive, but you will be admitted to one of the 16. So if you if you want to go to school, for example, like NC State or the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, those are um, very competitive schools and you're going to need a much higher GPA in your two year degree to gain admission to those schools. Um, but you may be a more competitive applicant for a college, a smaller college, for example, uh, the University of North Carolina at Pembroke or Elizabeth City State University. So um, it, it's where you end up depends on how well you perform at the community college in that degree program, but you you will gain admission to one of those 16 universities. 
Yes, yeah, so I'm looking looking at some of the language, it looks like the word is assures. So there your you admission go. is That's assured. Transfer, transfer assure. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. No worries. Um, so that brings us pretty much to the end of our time. Um, if there are any last minute questions, you can always uh, email um, any of the folks who were listed in the, um, the event. We also um, will be posting these presentations as well, so you'll have the opportunity to review it. Uh, thank you for joining our virtual open house. We hope you've enjoyed this session. Uh, please continue to watch other sessions to find out more about Wake Tech. Thank you and have a great day.